lifted in the name of the Lord. And uh, we do have Brother Devin Batten going to teach to us the word of the Lord today. I'm excited about that. We've just got to get Brother Devin off the uh, soundboard long enough to come teach. Hallelujah. He's getting it just right. But let's everybody say, God bless Brother Batten. Hallelujah. God bless Brother Batten. Love you, sir. I guess the pastor and I got the note. <laughs> the suit looks just like mine. All right. All right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise his name. Glory to the Lamb of God. All righty then. I'm going to start with our text this morning. Coming out of Matthew 16, verses 25 through 26. This is familiar scripture already because you heard it just last week, last Sunday. That's Matthew 16, verses 25 to 26. there say amen that's about half of you all right verse 25 for whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man gain in exchange for his soul Mark chapter 8, verses 35 through 37. Parallel this. Same, basically the same thing. Verse 35 says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gain, shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Let us pray this morning. I need your prayer. I've got a headache coming on. Um, I wish the ministry would come pray for me because um, it's really distracting right now. But um, let us pray this morning for the, for the will of God that I can speak his words to under you this morning the way that he wants them spoken. Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning, Lord, humble before your throne of grace. For, Lord, I am nothing without you, Lord. I'm just mere clay in your hands, O oh God. This morning, I pray, Lord, that your will will be done in this place. Lord, that your anointing will rest upon these lips of clay this morning. Lord, as the servant speaks your words unto your people, for, Lord God... You are the great God. You are the great physician. I pray, Lord, that you touch this head of mine, Lord, that you will take this headache away long enough, Lord God, that I can speak your word unto your people. I claim it in the name of Jesus this morning. I claim it in the name of Jesus this morning. Let us praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Yes, yes. Uh, well, there's nothing like getting your mind on God and letting Him do a work, which is what I'm speaking about this morning. Letting go, let God. Um, the youth retreat we went to earlier this year, it was awesome. Had a great time. Each message built upon the next. It just, it was awesome. But the whole entire time that we were there in, in, the, in the evening services, I kept getting this thought, kept hearing this voice. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new beginning. That's what this year has been. It's been a new day. It's been a new season. It's a new beginning. You know, last year we can't do it. You know, last year's come and gone. There's nothing we can do. We're a third of the way into this year. But it's still, it's a new beginning. It would not, I could not drop. I mean, that thought would never, it has not left me. Every day, every service, I said, it's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new beginning. God can do something great in this place. God can take that which I've done in the past, wash it, it's already washed away. It's under the blood. Never to be seen again. Never to be seen again. It's a new day. What I did yesterday, that was yesterday. That's in the past. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new beginning. I'm like, this is, I don't know. It's just, that's what I kept hearing, kept feeling while I was up there. But this year, all the messages, I know the theme is love, loving one another, God's love. But there seems to be an underlining theme. Let go, let God. Thank the Lord. Let go, let God. 
I'm like, Lord. And like, like I said, are some of the scriptures you've already heard, they've already been preached, already been talked, already spoken about, like the, my opening scriptures. But, brother, can you throw that meme up that was on Facebook Friday? This sealed it, if it ever comes up. Let go, let God. I said, all right, Lord. I said, I got it. I got it. Um, and I'm actually practicing what I'm, I'm teaching this morning. My favorite Bible program that I use all the time, all of a sudden, stopped working. I'm like, Lord, no. It's a PC study Bible. It's one of the easiest user-friendly Bible studies programs out there. It's expensive. My brother gave me a copy. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Brandon. Um, but you can go through the different translations back and forth. You can see the, what it, this translation is in this. You can go to the Strong's. You can go to a dictionary. You can go, and you can all put it on a um, word pad. So it makes studying and putting my notes together a whole lot easier. Had to go old school. Had to break out the Strong's Concordance, Vine's Dictionary, Unger's Dictionary. Had to write everything out. I'm like, and then type it all up. I'm like, Lord, what are you teaching me this? He says, let it go, son. Let it go. Let go of the technology. Let go of that which you know. Let go so I can do a work this morning. So this is going to be different. I'm out of my comfort zone this morning. I am totally out. Thank you. But hey, God's going to do a work. I'm relying upon him. I'm going to practice this. I'm going to let him do it. Because this is what he taught me to do. I'm always relied upon notes. I'm always relied upon self. God said, no, 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 no more. Let it go. Let me do it. I'm like, okay. Acts 2.38-39. Familiar scripture. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. referring to this church probably several times. This is what we are at the beginning of the book of Acts 2.38. We, we, we repent. We're sinners. We've got self on the throne of our heart. God's on the outside looking in. When we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, we become spiritually minded. God is on the throne of our heart and self is inside, but you know, he's not on the throne. But when we become carnally minded, we put self back on the throne and God is still there but we rely upon self more than we do God in the book of Numbers you don't have to look there it's just in the book of Numbers Moses and the children of Israel they are walking around going to the promised land Moses sent 12 scouts one from each tribe out to spy the land they come back with a bad report even though there was two that says we can take the land, but the other ten influenced the whole tribe of Israel, saying that we cannot do it because we're like grasshoppers in their sight. So they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. And we know 
what the 40 years walking around in the wilderness was. It's actually to purge those out, to purge the murmurs, to purge those that complained, purge those out that said that we cannot do it. It was a cleansing. And then they went to the promised land. Well, that's this right here. We walk around lost for a good part of our life until we find Jesus. We're wandering around in our sins because that's all we know. That's all we know. This flesh is full of sin. It says it in the Word. We were born sinners from the time of our mother, time of conception. We are sinners. We are born in the sin. We are sin this sinful flesh. That's what it is. It wants to do the things of this world. It wants to do the things of the fruits of the flesh. It wants to be sinful. It's only the Holy Ghost that keeps us from doing these things. So, you know, so we had to let go of the world to receive. We had to repent and turn around to receive. I've got a bunch of scriptures. So it's letting go of the world, crucifying the flesh. Philippians 3, 7 through 8. But what things were gained to me, this is Paul speaking, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. So he let go of everything, all worldly possessions. He let it go to let God in his life. And he was, he, he was a major, major piece in the beginning of the church. Paul did a, he was a smart man. Though he, at one point in time, he persecuted the church. He became the church. So he went from one extreme to the other. Highly educated man that God used to reach out to the Gentiles. Which I'm truly grateful because if he hadn't, we would not be here today. Um, Galatians 5, 24 through 26. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Now, I've been given a new Bible. I'm loving it. It's, but it's in the modern English version. And this is how the same scripture reads. Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. So we've got to crucify this flesh with all its passions and lust. We're not to be conceited, high-minded, thinking that we're better than one another. We are all in this together. I'm no better than he is, and I'm no, you know, or the pastor. Pastors has been put in a position that's a higher position than mine. But we're still the same people. He's still a man. He still fights the same temptations and, and the same things I fight. I mean, we're not different. I'm no, we're, there's no hierarchy. We shouldn't snub one another is what I'm trying to say. We shouldn't say we're better than this one just because, you know, we live, have a better lifestyle or we have more than this. No. We're all in this together. God doesn't see rich or poor. He sees souls. He sees people. He doesn't see color. He sees souls. Thank you. And that's what we should see. We shouldn't be, oh, they're not, no, we shouldn't judge people by their appearance. Because that could be the best altar worker. That could be the next missionary. That can be, you know, we don't know who God or what God's going to do with those lives. Yeah. We just need to love them, pray for them, show them the way to Calvary, and let God do the rest. That's all we're here for. To point people to Calvary. Help them find the way. So, yeah. in Romans 6, 6 through 8, and verse 11, more of crucifying the flesh and the body. Verse 6 says this, Knowing that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin or be a slave to sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin, dead in our flesh, dead. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. Likewise reckon ye 
also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Galatians 2 and 20 says this, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So we're no longer in the flesh, but here we crucified the flesh. We're dead to sin. And we're living in the spiritual mind. Christ is within us. Now, when you receive the Holy Ghost, there was one point that you had to do, other than repent and believe. You had to totally lose control of yourself. Totally lose control. You had to yield your body to the power of the Holy Ghost, to let Him speak through you as the Spirit gets. So it's about letting go. Letting go. We had to let go of self-control. We had to let go of the world to let God fill us with His gift and change our life. You can't hang on to the things of the world and make heaven your home. It's just, you can't serve two masters. You either love one or you hate the other. You know. Letting our worship go allows God to work. Now when we received the Holy Ghost, that was part of it. You had to worship. And I tell folks, look, I can only bring you so far. The rest is in your court. Worship. Worship. You begin, you begin to yield yourself unto Him. You begin, worship it allows Him to work. You know, I'm going to hit praise and worship. You know, that's just, that's just in me. Pastor hit praise, um, I think, last week. In the book of Numbers, chapter 2, there's a numbering of the tribes of Israel. And then there's a dividing of the tribes to the encampment around the tabernacle. Judah was to the east. But when the cloud that the children of Israel were following, when the cloud or pillar of fire, when it moved, of course the Levites got the tabernacle, broke it down, got everything ready. But the encampment or the army of Judah was the first one to move. That was the way it was, it was designed from the beginning. That's the way God ordained it. But in Judges, after they've been through the promised land, after Joshua, they've been to Jericho. Jericho, I think, was a faith builder for all those who um, didn't see the land. I believe it built their faith saying, hey, we can take this land because God is with us. But in Judges, first chapter, first verse and second verse, this is after jo the death of Joshua. It came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. For behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. 2 Samuel 6, 14. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with the linen ephod. This was a king. He had kingly garments. He disbanded all that. He let all that go. Come on. He let all that go to worship God Hallelujah. in an ephod. Come on. Yes, his wife said, you looked a disgrace. She became barren after that. You, you know, he did something pleasing to God. Yes. He let go of that kingly status Come on. and worshiped. Yeah. Not being conceited. He let go of that status and let God do a work. You know, it's one of the reasons why David is a man after God's own heart. Not just for the simple fact that he went and asked God to forgive him of his sin. But he did stuff like this. Yes. I mean, he, David was great. We are a chosen generation. We've been, when we've gone through this, we're supposed to separate ourselves. Hallelujah. We may be in the world, but not of the world. We can't help but rub sh shoulders with the people of this world. If you work, you, you work with folks that are not saved. You work with folks that don't believe as you do. You're always around it. You can't help that. But you don't have to be part of it. Second Corinthians, well actually 1 Peter 2 and 9 says this, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. We are supposed to stand out. 
that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. 2 Corinthians says this, 6.17, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. But this is where my mind keeps going to with the letting go and letting God. Because somehow we've become dignified with our worship. This is Sunday morning. I'm expecting a move of God in Sunday school. I'm not expecting to just sit here. I'm expecting a move of God. When I come through those doors, I expect the move of God to be a Sunday morning or, or every evening. It doesn't matter. I'm expecting a move of God. It shouldn't be that we come in here. I'm saving myself for second service. I'm all dignified. I don't want to mess up my hair. I don't want to get my suit wrinkled. Oh, no. When did we become so dignified? I mean, when we received the Holy Ghost, some of us rolled in the floor. We had tears running down our face. Our nose was running. Our hair was a mess. And we didn't care. Hallelujah. We received something that we've never received before. It was the greatest thing that's ever happened, you know, and it still feels good to this day. And I'm, I'm thinking, my brother, when, I was, when we attended his church um, a few years back, he kept saying, he kept going back and remembering the things of our childhood. And I keep thinking to myself, where is that young man? What happened to that young man? What happened in his life that it changed him? That he no longer does these things. And I says, what happened? Somewhere along the line, I, I thought I got more dignified and I didn't need to do that anymore. I mean, seriously. I was like, we used to, at camps, oh Lord, camps, my heavens. This is before the campgrounds got AC. This is before it was enclosed. We had chicken wire up on the, on the windows and we had ceiling fans on the inside. We had some, and in, in the middle of the summer, so we had some hot nights, decked out to a tee. We had a tie. I mean, we, but by the end of the service, hair messed up, tied to the side, our shirts and clothes soaked through the bone, and we didn't care. Hallelujah. We were in the presence of God. Hallelujah. That's all we cared about. Hey. Where along the line did we stop letting go and letting God? I, I asked myself this, I'm like, why? I said, I miss that young man, to be honest with you. I mean, we got in a circle, a prayer circle, and get drunk in the spirit. I mean, slayed out. And I was just like, I think the last camp I went to, Brother Chester Mitchell preached 30 minutes. The power of God was already in that place. I mean, it was all of the choir. I mean, it was everywhere. I didn't have a dry spot on me. I, just, I was soaked, but I didn't care. There were things more important. And like, I want to let go again to let God do the work. Yeah. I want to let go of that dignity that though I think that I need to have and let God. I want to get out of my box in this carnal-mindedness yeah. and let God be God. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if we're in our carnal mind, we've put ourselves back on the throne. Oh. We're leaving God out of it. We might have the Holy Ghost, we might have all power and all that and believe all that, but we put ourselves back on the throne. So we're not letting God do what he wants to do because we're so carnally minded. And a carnal mind is what? Romans, says, six, uh, Romans 8, 6 through 7 says, For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded, having God on the throne of our hearts, is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God might as well just say it's an enemy against God it fits for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so when we're carnally minded we're not subject to the law and we should be we should be spiritually minded we should let God do every decision should go through right here every decision I don't know if it may just be me I don't know if it's a guy thing but we like to analyze everything that comes our way every situation every problem that we're faced with so we try to analyze it so we can fix it within ourselves I'm guilty as charged I mean, I mean I've got a situation right now that you know come the end of the month that check just doesn't go very far 
And I'm like, Lord, do I need to take up you know, a second job or wait upon you? And on myself, I'd go get another job. But I'm, I'm leery about that because if I get a second job, how much church will I miss? How much time will I miss away from my family? Yes. You know, so I said, all right, God, I can't do this. You're messing with me? I says, all right, I'm letting it go. You do something about it. You know where I'm at. You know the situation I'm at. You know what to do better than I can. I says, I'll just pray about it and leave it in your hands. I'm letting go. I'm letting go. This is a hard lesson for me because I don't want to let go. I like being in control. That was one of the reasons back in the day when I was kind of lukewarm in God, cold, not really in, not really out. And we had some drinking buddies and we went in Tampa Bay and on the way back we got a case of beer. He did half and I got in half, but there was a point in time between Valdosta and Albany, I don't remember. It's not that I blacked out or passed out, I just, I have no recollection what was said, what was done, what was going on, no recollection. I said, Lord, never again, never again. I do not like being out of control. I haven't touched a drop since. Thank you, Jesus. But I had to let go. I had to let go to receive the Holy Ghost. I had to let go to let God in any situation. It says um, in Matthew 15 and 30, it says, Great multitude came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them. Casting them down at his feet. They let them go. It says, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. First Peter 5 and 7. When you cast your cares down here upon this altar, leave them there. Don't pick them up, take them home with you. When you cast them down, leave them there. Let it go. So God can do a work. Let it go. Because as long as you hold on to it, God can't do anything with it. You got to let it go. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. You can't rely upon this thing. If it's not in the word of God, you know, this is also Satan's playground if you allow it to be. Your mind can get you in a lot of trouble. Good or bad, it's still, it can get you a lot of trouble. You may think your brother has ought against you, and really he doesn't. Your perception of things. Your mind can get you in trouble. And it may be nothing. But you know, it always says, if you give the Satan an inch, he'll take a mile. That's true. If you ever let him in here, he gets a mess in with your thinking. He will really mess you up. You gotta line it up with God's word. And that's with any minister that comes behind this pulpit. It says to study thyself, to show thyself, uh, study to show thyself approved. Make sure we're teaching you the right. If I'm teaching you something wrong, I want to know about it. I want you to come to me and say, hey, look, brother, I went and looked at those scriptures and you got this wrong. Tell me. Because I'll get up here in front of everybody and apologize and say, hey, look, I told you wrong. I'm not. When I'm up here, when any minister is up here, your souls are in our hands. We're accountable for what we say to y'all. So we got to let go of our own ambitions. We got to let go and let God in our own lives. Every time we step back, we got to let the anointing flow through us. Because we are just but mere messengers. Clay. Lips of clay. We cannot do this without the anointing of God. I can't anyhow. I mean, I can come up here and give you three points and be done. I mean, any minister probably could. I search for these things. I've struggled with this sermon all week, trying to get it right, trying to get it. Last night I even struggled to the wee hours, when I, not wee hours, come 12 o'clock. I said, Lord, I'm done. He says, I, my eyes can't stay open, I, I'm done. I says, you're going to have to work this out. Because those last couple of scriptures, I had no way of having to figure those in. How to put, so I was like, Lord, it's in your hands. Oh, It's in your hands. I, I'm, you know, I'm letting go. It's, but this is this is this is where we need to be careful, and I feel that we've gotten here unknowingly. 
being carnally minded, we've let self back on the throne instead of letting God be on the throne. You know, we got to let our worship go. We got to, we got to be like it was when we first received the Holy Ghost. Like you don't care. Like you don't care. When you come in here, worship like there is no tomorrow because we're not promised tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come for some of us. So worship like there is no tomorrow. It says be radical. Be radical. And when I leave this place, I don't care what people think of me. I don't care what people think of me now. I've never cared. I'm like, that's one headache I don't need. Worrying about what people think of me or how I act. And I'm like, look, this is how it is. You either like me or you don't. I hope all y'all like me. <laughs> but I don't throw any bones for anybody. I, I, I don't change. I preach what I know. If it's in the Word, then I'm going to preach it or teach it. Because this is what we live by. We can't let this go. We can let go of the world. We can let go of things in our life that seem to hinder us in our worship. Seem to hinder us. Things that we need to leave here and not take home again. We need to let those God, let those go so God can do a work. You want to see a revival? We've got some things we've got to let go, people. Revival starts here. Starts here. It's not a move of God. It starts here. Revival is a reviving of your own soul. Getting your own soul right. That's what revival is. But it only takes one person. One person. To be the catalyst. The spark. To let it go. And God can do a great and mighty work. In this place. In this city. It just takes one. It takes one. I've heard that preach most of my life. It just takes one person to be radical in their praise. It takes one person to step outside that box and do things differently. Letting go of their own comfort. Letting go of the way that they do things to let God do the work through them. Now this place, we can do great and mighty stuff in this place if we just do this. We'll put God right back here. Back upon the throne of our hearts. So we can see this place packed out. I see it in my mind every time I'm here. Because you got to have faith to see things. you got to have a vision. you got to see things as they will be. Not as they are. That's faith. I see this place packed out. I see a 200 person choir. I see musicians galore. You know, they had the music fest. That's what I see here. All those people, all those musicians, all that talent, I see it here. Who's to say we can't have it? No, God can do all things. There's nothing impossible for Him. What we think or deem impossible, He says, oh, please, I got this. We just got to get out of the way. Let God be God. We got to let go and let Him be God. This was actually, well, I thought it would be short, but I'm, I'm through. But I just want to let you know, I'm here in the same boat y'all are. I preached more to myself this morning than probably to y'all, because I, <laughs> I'm not one for letting things go. It's just been my nature all my life. I've been able to do things by myself. But I'm at a point in my life can't do it by myself anymore. I've got to let go of my flesh. I've got to let go of my desires, my wants, and let God do what He wants to do. Yes, God. That's where I'm at. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but that's me. That's my testimony this morning. That's where I'm at. My confession of my soul. That's where I'm at this morning. And like I said, I kept hearing this all up. Since the beginning of the year, I kept hearing this being said. It's just the underlining thing. Let go. Let me have it. Let go. Let go. So I'll hopefully this ministered to y'all this morning. Hopefully. I'm hoping to God it did. 
Um, let us pray before getting over the pastor. Um, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for using these lips of clay this morning to bring forth your word. I hope I did it to the best of my ability, Lord, allowing you to do a work in me, Lord. I hope that this goes with somebody this day, Lord. Lord, that we're able to take this into the main service, Lord, to realize we got to let go of everything and just let you be God. Lord, things can change. We can have a great, awesome move of God. Things, people can have a life-changing experience. Lord, and I ask these things in Jesus' name this morning. Amen. Amen. God, why don't we stand to our feet? Why don't you just give yourself to Jesus, living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service. Let's everybody do that. God, I glorify you. I love you, Jesus. We abandon it all for the sake of the call, God, holy, devoted. God, to live and to die for the sake of the call. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We come to you with abandonment. My worship, Jesus, in our lifestyle, God. God, in our devotion to you and our prayers, God. God, I glorify you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. thank the Lord for it again. Thank you, King Jesus. Praise 